So we're just leaving Surrey, BC, one of the cities just outside of Vancouver. We've got about an hour and a half drive out to uh, Chilliwack Lake, or just before Chilliwack Lake in the Chilliwack River Valley, with 50 volunteers to spend the weekend counting goats. It's a population of goats that have been there for years and slowly been in the decline. So, well, the area we're going to be in is part of the Coast Mountains, so it's pretty rugged, pretty thick, and pretty steep. It's the hottest weekend of the year, potentially one of the hottest weekends on record. We've got a group camp out tonight, and then tomorrow everyone's heading out into their locations. And then some guys are going to be heading back to the group main spot tomorrow night, and some guys will be staying up on the mountain just so that first thing Sunday they can do some more glassing as well. Jeff Agostino and I'm the regional rep for the RMGA up here in BC. Five years ago I was driving down Highway 1 here coming into Chilliwack and there was a mountain goat sitting 300 yards off of the highway in an area where a lot of people wouldn't expect to ever see mountain goat. I felt like there was a good opportunity within the area to come in here and figure out what is going on and why the decline of the mountain goats in this area. Friday night was awesome, some great conversation great topics and just a great time to have that camaraderie. Okay guys, just uh, real quick. First off, I just want to start by saying thanks for coming out. Uh, most important thing is the bios aren't looking for Billy Nanny. They're looking for a mature and juvenile goat. Moving into Saturday, all the teams dispersed pretty early Saturday morning. Uh, most of them were out by about 5 a.m. and up into their specific spots and making their way in. Some of the guys had three, four hour hikes in. They were doing 1600 meter climbs. One obstacle down, good way to get the mud off your boots. <laughs> nice free crossing first thing in the morning. Citizen science to me is it's the people you see on the roads. It's the recreators, it's the hunters, it's everyone. It's what we need to do to protect the places we love and the things that we love. Without citizen science, there isn't enough funding for biologists and the people that are actually in the industry to do what they need to do in all of these areas. Any thoughts? It's hot. I wish I was on that snow patch. With citizen science, it's not limited by budget. It's just limited by horsepower. So as long as you can have enough horsepower in terms of people that are participating in it, you can collect a bunch of data that doesn't come at a cost to budget. We can only do so much work at once. So where your focus with staff resources is in one direction, citizen science can fill the void at that same calendar date in a different direction. That, like that face though, like if you wrap around that, that's where you, see them you always see them when you're coming in on the belly. Outdoors people, whether hunters, consumptive or non, they really like to be involved in in impacting the decisions that are made, you know, by biologists and such. So for me, it's it's the driver, by far. We haven't seen anything yet, but uh, we've only been here for about three or four hours. So once the sun sets, then we're gonna hit everything again and see if we can see some stuff moving. We could change the temperature a little bit. That'd be lovely, but uh, local for me as all over it, absolutely. Do a small part and give them back, coming out. It's, it's, it's so beautiful here, you know? It's win-win, it's everybody wins by doing this. I got a hold of Bill Jex. He put me in touch with the local biologist. They've been super supportive, giving ideas, talking through things, what they want to see, what they're hoping to see, what they might have expected or might not have expected. They've been very helpful and willing to give their time, which has been nice. Uh, they have gave some recommendations on specific ranges we should be looking at, specific peaks we should be looking at, and what they would have liked to see. People are concerned that you have a group of people that don't necessarily understand the rigors of scientific data collection, and that might introduce bias into results. Absolutely, no question about that. 
but then it falls to you as the organizer to make sure that you've built in uh, processes or mechanisms so that you reduce bias so that uh, you know the person that's out there that knows nothing except oh there's a mountain goat I see that mountain goat that they can contribute data that's commensurate or consistent with their level of understanding that fits into part of the equation. It doesn't have to fit into every part of the equation. I think that's two goats. You should never turn down an opportunity to, to get data. That would be my advice to every biologist out there. Every conversation that you have with someone who's passionate about a species is an opportunity to gain more information and more data points. How was the hike, bud? It wasn't too bad. It wasn't that long. It was hot. I think we, uh, we set up camp and then we find somewhere to glass for goats and spend the night up here. And then uh, maybe do a little more glassing in the morning and head back down. So we've got some meetings planned for after this with the biologists. Obviously we're going to get all the results, put them all together, combine them, put all the dots on a map and we're going to have these meetings. We're going to talk to the biologists, take their perspective on it, see what they think on what we found, you know, based on the weather that we had, based on all of the conditions, what their opinion is on our survey and how things went. And then to top that all off, it's going to be followed by, or the plan is for it to be followed by an aerial survey of this exact area within the next couple weeks to reconfirm the count. They're going to generate a whole bunch of data points and those data points are going to be useful for regional biologists and they're going to be useful for industry biologists and they're going to be useful for planners and they're going to also be useful probably to the local First Nations. I just think that every piece of what they produce is going to have a value at some level. What's going on? Oh, we got a goat. Can't tell if it's a Billy or a Nanny. We've been uh, glassing all day in the heat, in the sun, and uh, not getting anything, and two hours left of light, and finally the basin's in the shade, and out walks this guy. Hopefully it will be the start of a, of a, a longer term relationship that we have with the jurisdiction here, uh, especially given uh, the impacts of climate change and, and uh, recreational user impact. And that's probably the two biggest uh, uh, variables right now that we're seeing um, and the reason why it's so important that we are involved. We really want to focus on these goats and making sure that we can do what we can to make sure the numbers stay steady or on the incline. A lot more involvement coming in the years to come from Rocky Mountain Road Alliance and we're super excited to see where it goes. It creates a point in time with a data point and so now we have a baseline. We know that on date X there was a citizen science effort that documented this number of goats in this location. And Ten years from now we'll be able to go back and say are there still goats there or are they not there? The horsepower in citizen science is going to generate that and it's going to generate that overwhelming number of point locations and date stamps and that's going to be huge.